Yeah, loss and damage are really the, the negative impacts of climate change when they're manifesting. So we are talking about extreme events, but we're also talking about this kind of chronic uh, slow processes that lead to tipping points uh, locally in societies and, and really have negative consequences. I mean, it's quite clear that the disaster load is increasing globally, but of course with disproportionate impacts in the global south and in vulnerable communities. So that's, that's one reason. The other reason here at the climate summit is also that there's little progress on the mitigation side, so climate protection, and also on, on the adaptation side. And then it's quite clear that like this third area, which is around talking the, about the consequences, is, is, is raising in profile. Loss and damage, the conversations, I think they also have to include disaster aid, but it's really also a question on what is the role of the international community, uh, what is the role of the climate regime, and so how can, for example, the climate finance work together with disaster uh, and humanitarian actors. And so far this linkage is not, not created, and that's what the loss and damage discussions need to deliver. Secondly, there's also the conversation around what I call chronic impacts, um, and that's not something that is easily picked up by the disaster community and um, that's also something that um, actors seek to get out of the loss and damage conversations. I mean, the, on, on, on various scales, on the uh, local level, for example, through uh, insurance solutions, for some of the extreme events, uh, insurance solutions also have their limits, that's also quite clear. Also, for example, um, saving schemes. For us, we are advocating for our financial protection approaches uh, on the local level. Often there's a challenge around uh, affordability. And um, so the question is also, how can these approaches be linked, for example, to uh, national level social protection schemes in, in a clever and smart way? So that's, that's one area. Another area uh, at a different level, at the um, sovereign or national level, is, uh, for example, uh, disaster risk financing pools that are covering uh, entire uh, nation states. And they also receive a lot of profile uh, here at the COP and also received uh, some, some funding pledges. It's very important that we uh, focus the, the most vulnerable people in, in the loss and damage conversations. They're easily overseen and through the process really need to, to get the support and also link that to the conversation around who is responsible uh, on, on climate change. So if we have like these two actors, I think this is something that needs to come out of uh, loss and damage.